there is a widespread belief that the job market is just waiting for hordes of ambitious, eager young graduates to slide into high-paying jobs in the corner office. They just need to go to college, right? Well, the data tells a different story. Charts like this imply a correlation between higher income and additional education, showing on average that a person with a university degree earns far more money than the average person without a high school diploma. This reliance on averages and perceived higher earnings for having a four-year degree has fueled a college-for-all philosophy, causing educators and parents to encourage going to the university, any university, to major in anything in pursuit of social mobility and financial prosperity. This belief has increased college and university enrollment to an all-time high, resulting in 66% of high school graduates in this country enrolling in higher education right after high school. That's two out of three. The problem isn't that we need more students to attend college. The problem is too many students who enter are not completing. For most college students, it takes too long and they simply lose interest. Others are juggling too much, or they discovered they picked the wrong major or attended the wrong institution for them. Since most students are told a university degree guarantees a higher salary, many delay their career planning until after college graduation, resulting in 62% of students reporting they feel disengaged because they don't see the connection between their coursework and their future career. And so today, only a quarter of those that initially enroll will finish a bachelor's degree. You see, our educational system is very well-intentioned, but incredibly misaligned. The pendulum has swung too far towards college preparation at any cost and away from skill attainment. We even encourage a college-going culture as early as elementary school, with university pennants decorating second-grade classrooms, and we spend an exorbitant amount of time in high school getting into college. Education is core to our economy, but in order to guide our educational systems and maximize future income, we must understand this misalignment between education and our workforce. At some point in recent history, we have transitioned from asking the more important question of what knowledge and skills do you need to be employable and to contribute to your community, to now simply asking, where are you going to college? When in reality, not every degree is a direct preparation for employment. With rising education costs, a shrinking job market, and the oversaturation of some academic majors in the workforce, graduates take positions that do not require the education they have received, and often with debt they cannot afford. In fact, this misalignment between degrees and job skills causes half of university graduates to be underemployed in what are called gray-collar jobs, and 33% of college graduates are still underemployed well into their 30s. We know that success in today's world depends on aligning a student's academics with both their skills and available job opportunities. Yet there is growing evidence of a skills gap in which many Americans are not receiving the essential skills that are needed. Recently, a survey was conducted to find out if the skills found within the local workforce match the skills that employers need in the new economy. We found that employers experience difficulty finding applicants with strong technical skills, as well as problem-solving skills, applied math skills, and basic technical training. Unlike three generations ago, having hands-on skills and perfecting what you're good at can be more valuable in today's economy than getting a degree in something simply to get one. In fact, when hiring, business leaders say a candidate's knowledge and applied skills in a specific field are more important factors than where the candidate went to school or their college major. The economy and the world have dramatically changed. In 1960, when taking into account all jobs in the American economy, 20% required a four-year degree or higher, 20% were technical jobs requiring skilled training, and 60% were classified as unskilled. But what's the right percentage to meet the labor market demand for tomorrow? Georgetown University predicts only 33% of all jobs will require a four-year degree or more in the future while the overwhelming majority will be highly skilled jobs requiring professional and technical training at the credential or associate's degree level. The true ratio of jobs in our economy is one to seven. For every occupation that requires a master's degree or more, approximately two professional jobs require a university degree, and there are over half a dozen jobs requiring a one-year certificate or two-year degree. And each of these technicians are in very high-skilled areas that are in great demand. So while most jobs in the future will require some education and training beyond high school, the majority of occupations will not require a bachelor's degree or more. It was the same in 1960, the same in 2000, and will be the same in 2040. Very well intentioned, the recent college for all rhetoric is often misinterpreted as university for all. This message needs to be significantly broadened to a post high school credential for all. 
Students at various educational levels have left school without essential skills, setting up our children for failure, costing them and taxpayers millions, all while the labor market is desperate for highly trained, skilled technicians. One of the essential purposes of education should be to help students develop the knowledge and skills needed to search for and obtain work that they find satisfying. Fortunately, today's students no longer need to decide between higher education or career preparation. It's possible and increasingly necessary to achieve both. So how do you position yourself for satisfying in-demand jobs? Let's say you were considering a career as either an electrician or a business manager. You would find that the average annual income for electricians is 53,000, only about half of the 99,000 average wage for management occupations. So at first glance, it looks as if getting a bachelor's degree in business is a no-brainer. But adding skills and ability into the picture adds a whole new dynamic. What if you have the potential to become an excellent electrician, but lack the skills and ability to be an excellent manager? then you should be looking at projected incomes towards the bottom of the pay scale for managers and towards the top for electricians. You would then discover that electricians near the top of the pay scale make around 90,000, far higher than the income of a manager near the bottom of the pay scale at 44,000. Now, this is just one example, but the concept is true throughout all industries. The claim that you will make more money with an increased amount of education is not necessarily inaccurate, it's just incomplete. That advice is based just on the averages, but no one is perfectly average. Everyone has unique skills, talents, and gifts. Truth is, the income for the top individuals in a wide variety of technical jobs is far higher than the average income for occupations requiring a four-year degree. Nationally, associate degree earners range between 29,000 and 76,000, while bachelor's recipients earn between 37,000 and 102,000. But this data only accounts for the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile of full-time adult workers. This means 25% of associate degree holders earn more than 76,000 annually, while 25% of bachelor's degree holders earn less than 37,000. Our world has changed, and the university degree is no longer the guaranteed path towards financial success as it was for previous generations. And even if you do earn one, that education alone may not be enough. In today's highly technical, knowledge-based economy, employers want to know what you can do and what you can do well, not just what degree hangs on your wall. And new and emerging occupations in every industry now require a combination of academic knowledge and technical ability. One without the other is insufficient. We need to ensure we're providing students with all the essential skills required to be competitive upon graduation. So before enrolling in classes or deciding what you're gonna do next in your life, step one is self-exploration. Take multiple assessments and really analyze your talents and strengths. Step two is career exploration. Understand the jobs available, the income ranges they pay, and evaluate both the knowledge and skills they require. After researching all the possibilities, then engage in career planning by setting a flexible career goal based on your personality and abilities and not just your interests. This doesn't have to be what you want to do for the rest of your life, just set a goal of what you want to do first. Only then can you develop a skills-based education plan, including your tentative career goal with multiple education and training options both inside and outside the classroom. This could include community college, military service, a university, volunteering, registered apprenticeship programs, industry certifications, or gaining work experience. There are multiple paths to success. This is especially true if you are entrepreneurial. 77% of students want to be their own boss, and creating good jobs while rebuilding America's middle class hinges on the success of small businesses and startups. The new secret to success is to create ample opportunities to explore and hone one's skills and to choose an initial career aligned with who you are. This alignment will help ensure one's position at the top of each pay scale. For the sake of our students, our families, and our country, we can't afford to get this wrong any longer. The time has come to redefine the goal for our students. Is the goal simply graduation or degree attainment? or is the ultimate goal a relevant education to secure a well-paying career where they are both fulfilled and competitive in today's fierce job market. To ultimately secure a competitive advantage in the new economy, all students need a rigorous general education combined with applied technical skills, industry-recognized certifications, and specific preparation for employment. Will they be ready?